What is mobile release management? Well, I can tell you what it's not. It is not SaaS web development. Life is pretty easy for SaaS web developers. Their app is delivered from their servers, and I'm pointing to the sky, because I understand that their servers live in the cloud. And this is delivered directly to the browser, and now I'm pointing down, because that's where my computer is. All they have to do is write their code and merge it whenever they feel like it. Chrome and Safari have no power to reject their releases, so all they have to do is hit a button, and voila! Their newest release is in the hands of their users. We all know that does not happen with a mobile release. Before you can get anything in the hands of your users, you must first ask Tim Cook's permission. I know he doesn't have to give you Android developers permission, but just know every time you submit your own app, he is shaking his head in disapproval. And then you have to hope they download it after it's approved. These two very big speed bumps means it can take a lot of time for an update to end up in the hands of your customers. Since you can't lazily push an update out to your users like a web developer can, you need to be careful to ensure each of your releases is stable. Also, I'm sorry for calling web developers lazy. Since you can never just shoot from the hip to get an update out, you need to follow a very specific series of steps to ensure your releases are stable. We call this mobile release management. This means documenting your entire process. Every version that needs to be bumped, every fast lane script that needs to be run, every individual nod of approval that needs to be sought. All of this has to be written out most likely in a 40-page checklist and a confluence doc that no one has looked at or updated in six months. It means branching each release to ensure no half-finished code makes it out to your users and starts tearing your app apart like a little gremlin that lives on their phone. It means updating your screenshots, your metadata, and your app listing information, even though you're never quite sure if anyone looks at that. Because the first time you don't, you know you'll get a one-star review that says, love the app, but the screenshots are old, one star. It means getting approval from internal stakeholders to make sure they sign off on everything and then submitting the app to Tim Cook to make sure that he agrees with their approval. It means doing a phased rollout and carefully monitoring that rollout so you can quickly pause that rollout if anything goes wrong. The full mobile release process is quite involved, and there are many dependencies and potential blockers between each of the steps in the process. Careful coordination and effective collaboration is required, and it must occur across disciplines. This is all pretty complex, which is why you're listening to a guy standing on a roof in a cowboy hat explain it to you. That's why thinking through your own mobile team's release process is so important. The more you wing it with any part of this process, the more stressful each and every one of your releases will be.